And now I want to talk to you about um, another tradition um, that's, you know, another Mexican-American tradition. Now, my family uh, frequently visits the cemetery. And I wouldn't say that we always visit on the exact Dia de los Muertos, but anytime someone um, that who has passed away has a birthday, or it's Mother's Day or Father's Day, or it's Easter or Christmas, um, we go to the cemetery and, and we leave flowers and, and we have conversations uh, with our loved ones. Uh, and so this tradition of, of conversing with the dead, I guess, is a big part of also of, of my growing up. And of course, the traditional holiday is called Dia de los Muertos. Uh, in this picture, I'm showing you an example of an ofrenda. And what's cool about ofrendas is that everybody who makes one adds their own touch, adds their own flavor. It, every ofrenda is different because it's made in honor of a different person. Some of the things that you'll see, though, that are, in com that are common on ofrendas are pictures of the deceased and also refreshments. Uh, because it's believed that on the eve of Dia de los Muertos, the spirits come from the land of the dead to the land of the living, and they're actually making a journey. And so when they reach us, they're hungry and they're thirsty. So many ofrendas have water, uh, but they'll also have whatever beverage the people enjoyed in life. For example, in this picture, you can tell these men like to drink their beer because there's a bottle of cerveza right in the middle. Uh, and there's also food, fruit, candies, whatever their favorite food was. Uh, and there's a very traditional, a traditional pan dulce. If you'll notice on the outside of both of the men's pictures, there's a pan dulce that looks like it has uh, finger bones on the top of it. And the name of that pan dulce is called pan de muerto, bread of the dead. Uh, another really common item on, a friend, on, on an ofrenda are the marigolds. It is believed that the scent of marigolds helps guide the dead to us. But also marigolds were used in the ancient Aztec traditions as well. Uh, and a marigold, just like all flowers, is a great symbol for life. Because if you think about it, when you have a flower and it blooms, it's very colorful, it's very fragrant, it's very beautiful. Um, but that bloom doesn't last for very long. Soon after it blooms, the flower starts to wither and die away. And that's just a reminder to us that life is short, but that we should cherish every moment because while we're in it, it's beautiful, it's fragrant, it's something to value and to pay attention to. So that's a little bit about Dia de los Muertos. Um, and so uh, I wanted to uh, also give you a little bit of background about my experience working with Disney because um, Disney asked me to write the novel adaptation of the screenplay for their uh, Academy Award winning film, Coco. Uh, but let me go back a little bit to 2012. Uh, in 2012, Disney wanted to make a film called Dia de los Muertos and they applied for a trademark. And when they applied for the trademark, the community got really angry because they said, you can't trademark Dia de los Muertos, that's an actual holiday, how can you trademark that? Anytime something's trademarked, if, whether it's an image or a phrase, you have to get permission from the owners of the trademark to use that phrase or image. And so um, they started to protest. And one of the leaders of the protest was a cartoonist from, um, you know, he, he, he works with the LA Times, and his name is Lalo Alcaraz. And he made this poster, uh, and he reproduced this poster and gave it to people, and they were kind of marching in front of Disney. Now, you'll see on this poster that instead of Mickey Mouse, we have Muerto Mouse. And he looks like a Godzilla and he's kind of like trampling over the city and people are running in fear. And on the top it says, it's coming to take your cultura, you know? Uh, and so with all of this noise, Disney took a step back and they actually tabled the Coco project for a while. But then they had this thought, if we're going to make a film about Mexico, maybe we should go to Mexico. 
if we're going to do a film about Dia de los Muertos, maybe we should go and just witness firsthand what it's like when people celebrate Dia de los Muertos. So they went back to the drawing board and they actually did go to Mexico. They spent a lot of time there uh, doing research, talking to people, finding out how they celebrate Dia de los Muertos. And they hired Adrian Molina to write the screenplay. And all of the actors in the film are, all of the characters in the film are voiced by Latinx authors, uh, Latinx actors. And so when it came time for the accompanying books, uh, Disney wanted to make sure that they were hiring people that are also familiar with the Mexican American culture. And it was just by coincidence that the editor in charge of the project, um, when she was in college, took a children's literature class. And one of the books they read in their children's literature class was my book, Confetti Girl. So she thought, I wonder if Diana Lopez would be interested in doing this. And of course I said yes, that I was very interested in doing this. Uh, so it was a thrill. Uh, my homework from Disney was to take the screenplay, turn it into a novel, uh, but because most of the time novels are longer than screenplays, they also wanted me to add scenes that are not in the film. So if you ever have a chance to read the book, you'll notice that a lot of it is just like the film, but there's also quite a few bonus scenes uh, because I expanded on the story. It was a lot of fun to work on. And one of the highlights for me was getting invited to the Disney premiere of Coco. And so I wore my Mexican dress, I went to Hollywood, I got to hang out. Of course, I was looking for all of the actors and things like that. And I did get to see some of the actors. Uh, but one thing uh, you may not realize is when you go into the theater, um, you have to lock up your phone and cameras at a movie premiere because they don't want you taking any pictures. So I was really disappointed that I didn't get to snap pictures of these actors. But then when I came home, one of my friends said, hey, I saw you photobombing one of the actors on TV. And I said, what? And so I looked it up and sure enough, um, I was uh, in the background uh, during an interview with uh, Anthony Gonzalez, and he's the, the, the actor who voiced the character for Miguel. So uh, I had a lot of fun there, and uh, if you'll notice in the picture, instead of a red carpet, they had a marigold carpet, kind of to match the marigold bridge that Miguel crosses over when he goes into the land of the dead. So um, that was a lot of fun.